Hello YouTube, it is Chris here, and in today's episode we're going to be discussing my everyday carry survival bag for 2018. Welcome back everybody and thank you for sticking with me. Now over the past four years, this has been my EDC survival bag, which is the VanQuest Mobius. But something we noticed with that particular pack, if you're joining us for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new episodes or our daily giveaways. And make sure you smash that notification button so you don't miss anything. Also, we have a new round of our Amazon gift card giveaways and to enter, you need to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. We also pick winners in the very next episode, so if you enter on this particular giveaway, you'll find out who the winner is on the very next episode. Is that it wasn't quite big enough to stick everyday items in. Just because you have an EDC survival bag doesn't mean you don't need to have room for things like laptops, notepads, school books, whatever your job requires, things like that. So what's the point in having an EDC survival bag if you don't have some normal stuff built in? Now in this particular setup, the actual back half of this backpack is actually designated for everyday items for like my laptops, books, notebooks, things like that. But as you can see, it's completely empty just for the fact that we're just gonna be showing off the actual survival items we choose to put in here. Now this particular backpack that we chose to use for our update for our everyday carry survival bag is the Civilian One by Leatherback Gear. For those of you guys who saw the unboxing video, you know this backpack has a special little secret which is something we'll get into later. So right here on the outside of the pouch we have what I call kind of like my first aid and admin pouch. This kind of gives me some of my EDC tools and just everyday stuff that I would need to grab quick on the go. And right in here, we have a first aid trauma kit. So inside my trauma kit, we have a CPR kit. So if you ask the CPR mask and all the good stuff in there, we have a Celox Rapid Z Fold hemostatic gauze. If we need that, very similar to an Israeli bandage. We have a SWAT T tourniquet. We have a triangle bandage. We have a little ouchy boo-boo kit that's got sunscreen. It's the same exact kit that is actually sold in my DFS Micro Plus survival kit. And we're gonna overlay a little bit of footage of that so you can see what the contents that are inside. Then we have a pair of nitrile gloves so we can keep our hands clean. And then we have some conforming bandages and then we have a chest seal which is from Halo Seal. So we actually got this in a battle box. Moving on down here, this is a spot to store your keys but I keep pretty much keep them in my pocket so not a big deal there. We have a waterproof notepad right here so it's designed for all weather. So in case it rains, it's not a big deal there. We have my next tool, emergency tactical pin. I can use this for self-defense if I need to but it's a very, very good pin. We have a field notes pen. This is my just normal standard pen that I can just loan out to people. If I lose it, I'm not gonna cry because they can come in like 10 packs. And then we have an emergency escape evasion tool, which, which also has a stylus on it, which is the Olexar pen. And I like this because there's this glass breaking spot right here, but it's actually spring loaded. So like I said, if you find yourself in an emergency, break some glass. Moving on down this spot, we've got the Saga Q3, just so I can have a multi-tool. But this multi-tool is really slim and sleek and profiled. Got some pliers on it that are spring-loaded. It's an overall good tool. We also got this NA Battle Box. Then we've got the Olight S2A Baton. I like this because it takes common use AA batteries. We can just stick an extra pack of batteries in here and we're good to go. Then moving on to these two back panels in the very back, we've got my NIS 4 3-in-1 Eaton tool. This gives me a knife, a fork, and a spoon in case I can find myself in an emergency. Good to go there at flat folds. We did a full review on this. If you want to check that out, definitely go look this up. And then furthering back up in here, we've got a few of these survival emergency blankets from Iona Survival. They're a brand new item. We are going to be doing a full review on this. These are actually pretty freaking nice. They're a lot better than the very standard super cheapo ones. They come in like three, four, five packs. These things are freaking amazing. So we keep three of them in there. And then last but not least, we got this particular item from Smith. This is the X1 pocket pal tool, which is freaking amazing. We have like seven of these all over a bunch of different kits. We have a button compass in here. We have a diamond rod sharpener. We have a flashlight right here, which is not super bright, but it gets the job done. We have an emergency whistle right here, ferro rod, 
We have carbide and ceramic teeth, and as just a little micro tool for some backup tools in case you need them in a pinch. Now we're gonna focus on this very top small pouch. It's a very small pouch, but it actually holds a considerable amount of gear. We have two or three items tucked away inside. So the three items that I had in that pouch are my four-way silk cock key. I have a way to gather water since I am in a semi-desert climate and I'm in an urban environment. If there is a serious emergency while I am either trying to get myself home, or grab my actual bug out bag, anything like that, I have a chance to try to gather water. And then I have these. I have a small mini fishing kit from Sanford Outdoor Supply. This is the fishing mini boss. These are awesome. The little $10 kits. We've covered these a few times. And then we have, we kept it very simple for fire starting overall. We have the mini boss kit from Sanford Outdoor Supply. This is the mini fire boss. We have a ferro rod, some magnesium tablets, some fat wood shavings, some quick tender tabs. And for 10 bucks, this has got to be one of the best store-bought kits you can buy for the money. Pocket right here. It's a little bit bigger than the small little tiny pouch in here. But we have a few items tucked away inside. It's kind of like hygiene and post-medical care. So right in here we have two applications of Zip Stitch because the very first time we applied it, we actually did it incorrectly to be totally honest. And we realized we ended up wasting an entire unit. And that was very, very nerve wracking because if I only had one, I would have been screwed. Very thankfully I had a few. So we've decided that in case we have any issues because this is a non-invasive wound closure device, this will allow us to be able to tend to medical needs on the spot in combination with our other field medical kit on the fly before we get to a hospital. Now as this is a short term emergency kit, we have the shit kit by Potty Packs, and these are a filled toilet shirt kit. These are freaking awesome. They've got everything you need in here. We have toilet paper, wet wipes, disposable bags, hand sanitizer, all the kit and caboodle and goodies that you would need. And then last but not least, we have an epic wipe. So if it gets really, really, it's really, really hot, we need to cool our body temperature down. We just need to clean off. Maybe we went out in the elements for a few days, and we kind of just want to rinse off. We've covered the top main panels that actually held a lot of gear. We're actually going to be diving into the big, chunky meat and potatoes of my potatoes particular EDC survival kit and it's all right in here. So hopefully you can see there's quite a few goodies stuck away inside and we're gonna actually dive into this first particular panel and pull out those particular items and then kind of go over them for you. So first off I have my DFS Micro Plus survival kit. So what's the point in designing a kit if you're not gonna carry it around? So this is in case I have to kind of just jump, grab, and go, and I've got nothing else. I can't carry the pack. I just got to ditch and run. We have a, a lock sack bag that is waterproof. We have 20 foot of brass wire, two eight inch heavy duty zip ties. We have 25 feet of utility cord, repair tape, AKA duct tape. We have a wire saw with rings, a derma safe knife, kerosene filled compass from Japan, which is the same one that Wild Survival Gear has. We have a Fresno lens and a signal mirror that is the same one that I put on my EDC wallet. We also have a 117 decibel rescue whistle. It's the same one that they actually use in FIFA tournaments for soccer. Then we have that Essentials First Aid Kit, so that's a little bit more redundancy there. We have the Military Speed Hook Fishing and Trapping Kit, so that'll help me for some small game animals for trapping. We have the Sparklight Official Military Spider Starter. We have a full pack of Sure Strips which is genuine military tender, good waterproof tender. Then we have the Frontier Water Filtration Straw and uh, the original Grabber Emergency Space Blanket. So all in all, this particular kit is rigged out for an nice, a small 10 to 11 ounce kit that gives you everything you need for a very short term, quick emergency kit. And then we have just one knife. This is my 140 Jakari Puko from Vero Stulaka. We've done a review on this. This is an awesome freaking take of a knife for it being like a $30 blade. It is freaking amazing. Moving down in the actual middle of this particular compartment, we have some shelter and sleeping options. So the first small item is the Titan Emergency Sleeping Bag. This is basically the only sleeping bag that you can have that will fit in there. It's designed to retain a lot of your body heat and reflect the heat back onto your body by also helping you keep a very lightweight option. There's a bunch of them, like the Soul Two Person Bibby. There's a lot of different options, but this is the particular one we decided to keep because it actually matches with this particular system. This is actually, I think it's an Armenian surplus old school one person tarp shelter. It's really, really thin. It's got some aluminum poles in here. And what we're gonna do is actually take this out and build it for you. And we're gonna let you see the overlay footage of that. And I've spent a single night. It's miserable, but it does keep you out of the elements. It is, it's definitely not like rocking one of those nicer tents or hammock systems you can sleep in, but it is better than nothing. Then last but not least, which is kind of hard to see, which is actually a felt pocket where a laptop could go is we have the last bit of goodies in here. So in this particular section, we've got a shemog because you can use that for everything. A head cover, face cover, towel, anything you need to. The shemog is a shemog. It's like a have to if you're a survivalist. 
Then we've got a 10 pack of the Rain Stick High Purity Water Filters. We actually got these from my buddies over at Scallywag Tactical. The cousin of these were in a battle box, but we actually got to do a full review on these and we'll definitely throw that video right here so you can see that particular video. But this 10 pack, the reason why it's so good, think of these as liquid food rations, not just as a water filtration, because they do take a while. But what you use, what how I would use these is you use your water filters, your water bottles, just drink water, stay hydrated. Hydration is key in an emergency. However, if you know you're gonna be at a spot for a little while, you dump like two of these in there, and that actually will fill up and give you electrolytes, calories, sugars, salt, all the things your body needs to keep moving. Because something what we've noticed is that in a survival situation, a lot of unprepared hikers and trekkers that go in a day pack and they don't really bring a lot of gear with them, we noticed that even after nine, 10, 11, even 12 days, they're still alive. They may be a little tired, a little weak, and how they kept themselves alive is they wore appropriate clothing and they kept themselves hydrated. And that tells me two things. One, learn nan navigation, have that shit on lock. But two, you're not gonna die in the first week or so if you catch yourself in an emergency. As long as you keep yourself hydrated and not injured, you should be good to go. And then last but not least, if I find myself an extended stay, I need the ability to cook my food. So we have the big mama bear from Bear Bowl, which is the bare bones version. It's a huge freaking pot. We cover that video and we'll do some overlay footage of that. But then behind there, we keep it in the strap right here. Yeah, very clever, don't you think? This is actually the Fire Ant by Emberlit Stoves. It gives me a full titanium stove to cook my food, boil my water. If I actually do any fishing or trapping, I can actually take care of all of that. We're not wasting a whole bunch of space. There are a few people that have medical needs, so if they're like they're diabetic or they have medications they have to take, you know, anything like that, it's okay, it's totally fine. I understand the total need of having to keep some food in there. So keeping something like a pure protein bar, some beef jerky, if you are a part of the Thrive Camp Company, you can rock some of these. Something like the Snackies from Thrive Life. There are a bunch of different options. You can keep just a little bit of food, beef jerky, snacks, anything like that. And keeping one little, one or two little snacks because if you find yourself in a stressed out situation, having some protein, having some carbohydrates and some energy to kind of just boost the morale, boost your hope, keep your stomach full, keep yourself moving and going for the first 24 to 72 hours could be a big deal. And if that's the case, something like the Rain Six, like I said, in an emergency will give you your electrolytes, your calories and keep you moving until you get back to safety. So Chris, I did some Googling on, on a tab while you were talking about that bag and I looked it up, Chris, and it's like a $350 backpack. Why do you ha freaking have a $300 backpack over a lot of others? You try to price this out and be showboating? Actually, no. That is not the reason why this is an expensive backpack. It's an expensive backpack because it is a special backpack. Uh, because of the fact that it is designed to be plain Jane and unassuming is a great thing, but a lot of backpacks are that way. That doesn't make it special. It's made of high Cordura nylon, really nice zippers. It has really, really hardcore construction for the backpacking straps. Oh, and another feature right in here that you can actually do is typically if I don't want to carry my wallet and I get a shady situation, there's an RFID pocket back in here to keep some gear. Additionally, with my everyday carry items, such as my laptop and battery pack, things like that, there's these two zippers and actually in here, I almost forgot about this. There's a spot for me to actually be able to charge my Olight flashlight through my external battery. But outside of all these nifty little gizmos and gadgets that are a part of this backpack, and as you can see, this quick grab handle is super robust. Oh my gosh, this thing is thick and hardy. It's amazing. But what makes this backpack special is something we didn't cover. As I said, I keep this area empty, right? Keep it empty on purpose so I can keep things like my laptop, headphones, just normal day-to-day -day stuff. But this particular zipper, notice it's red. These are black, that's black, this is red. So in the overlay footage that you're seeing is this particular backpack completely separates from the main body. This is the slow way to do it. And we do, we do that for demonstration purposes for you guys so you guys can see how it's done. But it separates. For you guys who haven't seen the unboxing, you're like, Chris, why does it separate? And the really bad dad joke to the reason why this thing separates, as I said, so you can evenly distribute both sides of the backpack weight on both sides of your body. And though that could work, that's actually not true. It's inside here on this pot and right in here, there's a secret. For those of you who didn't do any cheating, this particular backpack is 3A rated. Yup, it is bulletproof. Up to like a 44 Magnum. It's 3A soft armor on both sides. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the number one reason why I chose this particular backpack. Because not only will it carry my gear, it's made of high quality materials, 
but it could also potentially actually save my life in an emergency. But all in all, that is the actual main reason why we chose this backpack over a lot of others. It's not because it is the best backpack in the world, but it is potentially a life-saving one. So all in all, this is the contents of my everyday carry survival bag for 2018. And as you see, we cover the carrying of our gear. We cover shelter, food, cooking, water, hydration, water filtration, having tools on us, illumination, all the freaking basics, including first aid and trauma kits. Not to mention having the ability to carry everyday items on top of this particular gear without weighing us down. Now, all in all, we did a weight of this particular kit and keep in mind this backpack is a little heavier. It's about a four and a half pound backpack. And all in all, this kit weighs out at about 10 to 11 pounds. So I know a lot of people ask that in the comments. It's a very, very, very lightweight kit overall. The winner of yesterday's Amazon gift card giveaway is Jeff Smith. Congratulations, Jeff Smith. You're the winner, so difficult to set on the back end of our channel, so we need to contact details. But that's it for now. And if you enjoy the discussion and the overview of my everyday carry survival bag for 2018, give to this video a big thumbs up and share this out with your friends and family in your social media networks so we can keep growing, thriving, and making awesome videos for you guys. But that's it for now. Hope you guys have an absolute wonderful day. I'm out.